Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, October 16th. After this year's incredibly successful Electrek Formula Sun Grand Prix, Electrek has moved to quintuple down on the title sponsorship of the American Solar Challenge and Formula Sun Grand Prix. We've signed a five-year sponsorship agreement. The agreement will guarantee the parent organization, which is Innovators Education Foundation, has funds to host the yearly race through 2028. The race pulls from global contestants of top universities to compete in a solar race in multiple categories, and it winds up being the brightest talent of the industry, all on offer. Tesla and Blue Origin, for example, have long participated in the solar racing events, and one recruiter described the talent scouting acquisition as shooting fish in a barrel. Electric certainly isn't the only sponsor that the organization is accepting. If you'd like to join us in sponsoring the events, please get in touch. Tesla is preparing to bring its electric cars to South America, according to a new job posting in Chile. It has been just over a decade since Tesla launched the Model S and significantly accelerated the deployment of electric vehicles around the world, but there's one continent that they have not yet touched, and that's South America. That's about to change as Tesla has started to promote a job listing on LinkedIn for a country manager in Chile. Chile is an interesting choice for a first entry in the South American market, since the Brazilian auto market is much larger. The Chilean auto market consists of only about 234,000 vehicles sold year to date, and that's down 29% versus the previous year. But while the size of the auto market in the country is small, there is strong interest for electric vehicles, which could explain the move. The country is also rich in lithium, a critical material for EV batteries, which has helped create interest for electric vehicles in the country. The government also announced an initiative for only new vehicle sales to be electric in 2035. Tesla is starting to predict supercharger availability upon arrival by looking at how many vehicles are en route to the station. Currently, if you need to stop at a Tesla supercharger, you can look at your in-car navigator to quickly check how many stations are available. However, it can be less useful if you're on a road trip and you are still an hour or two away from the station. But now, a publication called Not a Tesla App has found a previously unreported feature in the new 2023.38 Tesla software update. It enables the automaker to predict supercharger availability upon arrival. Now, Tesla owners are incentivized to enter a supercharger location in their navigation because it enables the car to prepare for the battery pack for charging. This also enables Tesla to know just how many people are going to that station at any given time and know when they'll get there. Today's episode is sponsored by AMP, makers of energy management solutions for e-mobility products. Team AMP is known for its expertise in the industry when it comes to understanding the battery and its functionality. With more than 300 years of combined experience, the team has developed proven battery management systems that are suitable for a wide range of applications, starting from 12 volts to 1,000 volts. That extends to the AMP battery management systems algorithms that help companies building e-mobility products improve battery life while maximizing the power that can be safely utilized. The company also offers a highly integrated combination of charging software and hardware with AMP EMU. That includes an all-in-one DC-DC converter, onboard charger, power distribution, and a charge controller for electric vehicles. This unit saves space and cost in your EVs while providing maximum power density. Brands building new electric vehicles products will want to consider the AMP EVCC, a state-of-the-art charge controller for electric vehicles with support for all major charging standards, including CCS, NACS, and Shademo. And the AMP Fast Charge Junction Box to enable Level 3 DC fast charging, all built on the AMP charging software stack, the world's number one charging software capable of complying with all major charging standards globally. You can learn more about the AMP Energy Management Solutions at amp.tech. The Nissan LEAF now qualifies for the U.S. federal tax credit to the amount of $3,750. When Nissan released the LEAF, many considered it to be the first mass-market electric vehicle back in 2010. Nissan revealed that the 2024 version produced in the U.S. meets the battery component requirement of the Inflation Reduction Act and now qualifies for half the tax credit. Still riding on last decade's technology, the LEAF still features Chidemo charging, which is quite rare outside of Japan, 
and also a passively cooled battery, which can lose battery lifetime rather quickly. Kia's first three-row electric SUV is now available to order. The automaker opened the EV9 orders on Monday with a starting price of under $55,000. Kia says the EV9 delivers, quote, sought-after features packed into one powerhouse EV SUV with true SUV capabilities. Now, what they're talking about in terms of numbers is 5,000 pounds of towing, seating for seven, 81 cubic feet of cargo space, 7.8 inches of ground clearance. So the EV9 checks quite a lot of boxes. Powered by Hyundai's eGMP platform, the same one with the EV6 and Ionic 5, the 800-volt EV9 can charge from 10 to 80% in under 25 minutes, and the EV9 itself has a maximum range of up to 304 miles. Following the launch of its all-electric compact crossover called the Number 1, Smart has introduced a new, lower-priced model that for some reason they're calling the Pro. Now, by switching to lithium-iron phosphate batteries, the Number 1 Pro offers lower range than the other trim levels. Starting at an MSRP of €34,490, the Number 1 Pro rides on a 49 kilowatt hour pack. This version's WLTP range is about 300 kilometers, which is down from the 400 to 440 kilometers on the other trims that they are currently offering with a larger pack. Looking ahead, Smart says that the new Number 1 Pro will initially launch in Europe this fall, beginning with Germany, France, Spain, Italy, and Switzerland. The first images of Volvo's EM90 electric minivan have emerged ahead of the official debut next month. The vehicle is based on the Zeker 009 MPV from the parent company Geely, and the Volvo EM90 is almost identical aside from styling. The electric minivan will ride on the same platform that the parent company is using for the Polestar 4. Volvo's EM90 will also use an electric motor from Geely's subsidiary, Veridi E-Mobility. It'll also use battery packs from Geely's joint venture with CATL, which is Sichuan Battery Power Company. Now, the Zeker version of the minivan has two versions with a 116 kilowatt or 140 kilowatt hour pack. We'll learn more about the Volvo EM90 on November 12th when the electric minivan makes its global debut. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Martin Wood says, Looks like Tesla will have to upgrade all their superchargers over time with longer cables. Yep, that's going to be quite the effort. Tesla has upgraded a small handful, but they'll really have to work hard and get it in gear and hire a whole new set of teams to make this happen. The network has been online for quite a long time, and it only makes sense that the upkeep comes with some upgrades. For the best network on the planet, it's no small feat to keep it up and running smoothly and deserving that reputation. I have confidence that Tesla will get the stations to a point of viability to match the work on the Cybertruck that's coming out. Now perhaps they will focus deliveries on California first and then follow the same expansion path of the original network. If that's the case, then it sounds like fun times ahead. I can't wait to see that low poly vehicle on the road and on the freeway. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.